proposed summertime ice cream summit at Harrington Lake. Well, I, I did not know about the proposed ice cream summit, and I, I for one, am, oh wait, OMG, yes, get local ice cream special flavor, maple or poutine brills this. That's what we call the drip. The fuck are you doing, NDP? You posted cringe. In Canada, MPs pass motion declaring genocide against the Uyghurs in China, despite cabinet abstentions. Cabinet abstentions, you say? This is a weird story, everybody. Uh, Canada became the second country after the US of A to designate what is happening to the Uyghur Muslim minority in Xinjiang as a genocide, right after the United States. Now, the United States own, I believe, uh, State Department lawyers have claimed that they don't feel that it should be dignified as a genocide. Well, they do say that it is tantamount to crimes against humanity. The reason this whole thing is a little bit confusing, of course, is that this is something that the right wing in America has been pushing for very, very hard. Nothing like uh, having Mike Pompeo be uh, the spokesman for a movement or anything in general, really. And at the same time, in Canada, the same is true of the conservatives. It was the conservatives of Canada under Aaron O'Toole, the tool, who were pushing very heavily for us to designate uh, what is occurring there as a genocide. Now. There's an overwhelming amount of misinformation when it comes to what is happening in Xinjiang, especially an overwhelming amount of information coming from one individual by the name of Adrian Zenz. Now, Adrian Zenz happens to be a far-right religious nut job, and no one should take him seriously, and unfortunately, a lot of people do. So a lot of the information coming out about the subject happens to be pushed by one individual, where it's like, well, do we have actual evidence of, say, them uh, involved in lowering birth rates or stuff of that nature? It usually comes from one individual. That person is named Adrian Zenz. Ends. And I'm not saying this isn't only the problem of the BBC or CNBC or MSN or Fox News or any of the major news organizations. This is also the fault of Democracy Now! I have been pulled into this rabbit hole, unfortunately, and I'll be the first to say that I was submitting links of Democracy Now! stating this, where Adrian Zenz was the source. Democracy Now! has, in, uh, has interviewed Adrian Zenz. And Adrian Zenz is one of the worst people to happen to this entire ordeal because it's very easy for someone who happens to be, let's say, a leftist authoritarian who may go by a different name, to say, by the way, uh, this link has Adrian Zenz, therefore not true. Uh, oh, this this research article has Adrian Zenz, therefore not true. And, and it just it keeps popping up. Adrian Zenz, Adrian Zenz, Adrian Zenz. Well, there is an overwhelming also amount of uh, information out there that is non-Adrian Zenz tarnished, including a whole bunch of testimonies. Uh, UBC, the University of British Columbia, currently has a, a cataloging project in which they're trying to keep a ta uh, track of every single first-hand account and testimony that's been given by uh, survivors, uh, refugees uh, from Xinjiang uh, who have uh, given their stories and told about the conditions uh, at these concentration camps, internment camps, whatever you want to call them. If it happens to be China, you might hear the term being used, uh, re-education centers. All that being said, the Conservatives of Canada obviously are very, very big on wanting this to become a key issue. They, they wanted this to occur right now and they wanted to make a lot of noise about this. And the reason they're doing that, of course, is it was very easy politics. A, ain't no one voting against this because it just makes you look horrible, right? Uh, so everyone is like, okay, fine, we'll take a firm stance on this, including, by the way, uh, the NDP, including the Greens, uh, including the Bloc Québécois. Every single party had MPs who were voting in favor of this proposal put forth by the Conservatives. The exception being the entire Liberal Party who abstained. Now, there were Liberals who still decided to go forward and vote on it because they didn't want this again to tarnish their political reputation, but the rest of them, including Trudeau, decided to take a back step away from this, which again created political theater, which was perfect for the Conservatives, and here we go. Members of Parliament voted Monday to label China's treatment of the Uyghur Muslims a genocide and to call on the federal government to formally adopt that position without the support of the Liberal Cabinet. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau did not participate in the vote. Foreign Affairs Minister Mark Garneau abstained from the record, while the rest of his cabinet colleagues were absent, I abstain on the behalf of the government of Canada. In total, 266 MPs, including all imposition MPs and most liberal MPs who participated in the vote, backed the Conservative motion. There were no votes against the motion and two MPs formally abstained in what was considered a free vote for liberal MPs. The motion introduced last Thursday states, in part, that of the opinion in the House of Commons, the People's Republic of China has engaged in actions consistent with the United States General Assembly Resolution 260, commonly known as the Genocide Convention, and the House therefore recognizes that a genocide is currently being carried out by the People's Republic of China against the Uyghur and other Turkic Muslims and that we call on the government to officially adopt that position. It's really hard to cut through, uh, obviously, the manufacturing of consent that's coming out right now on the behalf of both the United States uh, as well as most Western media against this, uh, while at the same time trying to find out what is
is the truth. And again, Adrian Sands has got to be one of the worst figures in this uh, for this kind of stuff. What I would recommend to people is again to look towards first-hand accounts and testimonies rather than you know reports uh, that end in dot 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 research provided to the UN Assembly by Adrian Zenz. As of now, uh, I believe uh, the International Criminal Court has not has decided to not designate it as a genocide. All this being said, it's kind of gross uh, semantics that is being played here, especially for political opportunism. Some people are like, well, is this a genocide or is this not a genocide? In Canada, we've had the same problem for a long time uh, with the residential schools uh, program. And that's what a lot of this harkens to me as. Uh, I believe what I'm seeing in terms of viable information, this harkens to a cultural genocide in which the culture of a people is trying to be erased. Now, genocide itself would mean that you are specifically trying to uh, exterminate an ethnic minority. So you are involved in actions which are, for their very purpose, intent to get rid of an ethnic minority for whatever reason. Uh, sorry, it doesn't even have to be a minority, just, just one specific ethnicity. Whereas in the case of cultural genocide in Canada, Canada's done both, by the way. We, we've done real genocide. Uh, where we've just tried to exterminate indigenous peoples and we've done cultural genocide in which we've tried to erase indigenous people and their culture. We did this through something called the residential school system in Canada, which closed very recently. I think 1991 was when the final school closed, but the idea was we would put up all these schools across Canada and we would take, and I'm going to use a pejorative here quite a bit, we would take Indians and remove the Indian from them. That was the actual quote that was used. Indian, of course, is an antiquated term. We don't use it anymore. But back then, because, you know, uh, I'll get into all that as a separate thing. The idea was you would take children from their mother's arms, literally, you would rip kids from their mother's arms and you would put them into these institutions across Canada and you would systemically, because it was a systemic program in which thousands and thousands and thousands of indigenous children were taken and put into these schools, you would erase their names, you would give them proper Christian names, you would erase their language, you would give them English instead, and you would erase everything about their history and culture, and I do mean that quite literally because it was an oral culture. Indigenous cultures were not written cultures. You would have storytellers who would pass the stories and the history from one generation to the next. So in these schools, you would effectively erase their history forever if you were capable of having these programs work. Uh, and on top of that, uh, of course, they happen to be rife with uh, sexual abuse, physical abuse, uh, the likes of which have been hearkening. Some people have called it Canada's Holocaust in a lot of ways because, you know, thousands of children died, thousands of children were sexually abused, thousands of children now uh, grew up to have PTSD as a result of this. It's one of the worst probably parts of Canadian history and one that is very, very recent. Again, it, it, it ended uh, in, in the 90s. On top of everything, um, the Conservative Party of Canada has been trying to downplay it, including Aaron, Aaron O'Toole, the same person we're talking about right now. That is a cultural genocide. You, you were trying to erase the culture of an entire people forever uh, for the purposes of whitening them, of, of making them re-enter civil society with the rest of us. And now we, we will never assume that they are to be of the same class of people, the same stock as the good white Aryan race, but we will at least make them a little less savage. We will remove the savagery from these, from these folk until they're ready to be introduced into Canadian society. And this is our idea of kind of bridging the gap. So the reason I say this to everybody is that when you hear the word, for example, Example, settler used or colonizer used, especially if it's being used as a pejorative on the internet, people who are sometimes overly online and happen to be white and they use settler as an insult, like, oh, goddamn, F you settler and stuff like that. The reason is, is that I would never tell everyone here that you, at the end of the day, uh, have to stand up uh, for the glory of the Ottoman Empire and that there are people right now who are trying to take down the, the Ottoman Empire. You would be like, well, that, that doesn't exist anymore. And I'd be like, actually, yeah, that's true. So there, there's, there's a line, right? There's a line in which people uh, who are currently occupying certain territories territories, it doesn't make sense anymore because we don't actually refer to that uh, particular culture, ethnicity, uh, even religions at times, right? But there is examples and tangible examples, Palestinians uh, in Israel, for example, or indigenous people in Canada, indigenous people in America, indigenous people in New Zealand, and indigenous people in Australia, in which they are still fighting for their own survival, in which there had been a number of treaties signed to them by the people who invaded their lands. These treaties granted them a lot more power, and then the treaties were shit upon shit upon by the colonizers. That's the idea when you hear things of land back. When they're not, when they're talking about land back, the idea is that these people, and they sometimes make up 5% of the population in the case of Canada, they're still fighting for their own survival. They're still fighting for their own, own autonomy. They're still fighting for people to recognize that these deals were signed and you aren't, you aren't honoring them. That's it. So there is an ongoing problem 
That, that's why it's referred to as that. That's why it's referred to as settlers. That's why it's referred to as colonialism, because it's not over. They, they haven't died. They haven't given up, is, is kind of the point, right? So, so it's not as if it's like, well, just come on, get with the program. We've moved on past this. It's like, well, no, this is an ongoing issue. That's why we're talking about it. That's probably the easiest way I, I could explain it to you. Anyways, when it comes to this, this is not me trying to do a whataboutism, even though I know it's going to sound like it. This is voted to declare what's happening to the minority Muslim Uyghur population in China a genocide. The motion was put forward by the Conservatives, who called on the Liberals to send a united message about human rights. No MPs oh, voted up, against it's good to see it, you. but not everyone voted for it. The they got to me. It was a matter of time, really. I talk about a lot of controversial subjects. It was, it was bound to happen. It's still plain, though. I, I'm going to be honest with y'all. Canada is scuffed. D just as a country, it's it's kind of scuffed. I'm curious, is this a glitch or is this what you actually uploaded Global News? The House of Commons has voted. <laughs> That's what you uploaded? <laughs> Global News is a major news source in Canada. It's got 2 million subscribers. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Wow, that's brutal, and and no change. You haven't, you still haven't done anything about it. How did but you not, not notice? Every... It's it's only like the first twenty seconds. <laughs> is anyone else there getting this weird thing where the video freezes or mutes around the twenty second mark? My internet is fine, so it's not that. Looks like the video got sent to the CT CCP Gulag. Oh, here we go. It's part of the culture. <laughs> well, that's weird. Did the CCP? Oh, <laughs> everyone's genuine. Okay, so there's a lot of a lot of right wing conservatives in Canada who who probably think this is part of some deep state CCP conspiracy to, to get us. Good afternoon. This afternoon, members from all parties voted to recognize the genocide currently being carried out by the People's Republic of China against Uyghur and other Turkic Muslims. I want to thank all MPs for sending a clear signal on the importance of human rights and of dignity. But Justin Trudeau and his cabinet refused to vote. In fact, oh, absolutely. No, this is 100% political opportunism. I'm not saying that I don't think that the uh, this doesn't make uh, conservatives hard. It does. Uh, well, as hard as they can get. I mean, this, this probably gets them to half mass. So we're talking, you know, maybe just like uh, a little swell, a mild swelling. Um, but I, I definitely think that is true. I, I think that they're very, very excited to be like, oh, yeah, China bad. China's the bad. So uh, because China bad, America good. Uh, you know, what they're doing is terrible. So this is, this is great. Uh, they love this. But I'm saying the reason they would bring this up and push this to a vote and to make this into an entire political theater, which is now gaining international attention because now, right now, Joe Biden is meeting with Trudeau and now this happens to be the two countries that are like, yeah, we've decidedly announced that this happens to be a genocide and don't look inward. Don't don't look to what our own countries are doing. I I'm not saying it's a bad thing to acknowledge the horrors and atrocities that are going down in, in Xinjiang. Uh, people should, absolutely. Especially, by the way, all, all you motherfuckers, and this includes Canadian companies, you are getting products made in these camps. Apple, for example, Apple is getting products made in these concentration camps. Th there had to be a bill introduced in the United States to say, by the way, we should stop getting products made by our corporations that are making billions of dollars in profits uh, made at these factories. Maybe we should stop that. How do you condemn this and say this is a crime against humanity and then be like, by the way, cool phone, ooh, ooh. Like, what the fuck? You know, that's, that's why I'm like, the whole thing reeks of hypocrisy. That's why it's political opportunism. That's why the whole thing, like, is absolutely fucked up for these right-wing conservatives to be like, uh, shame, how could they? This is beyond the pale. By the way, uh, let's downplay the residential school system in Canada as, as not being cultural genocide because, I don't know, reasons? Like, fuck you. Fuck all of you. Like, shame. Shame on all of you. Uh, and now the, the idea is that already Justin Trudeau is enormously unpopular in Canada, mostly for the vaccine thing. It, like, it seems like the one thing Canadians could not accept beyond all his many scandals. I'm not talking about the blackface. He's involved in so many financial scandals and backdoor dealings and taking, uh, you know, money from well, taking vacations and also other shit like that. Uh, scandal after scandal after scandal has happened to the liberals in Canada. But this seems to be the one thing that they couldn't tolerate is the vaccines. Like in Canada right now, our vaccine program is abysmal because Canada has spent a lot of money. It's a rich nation. They spent a lot of money buying vaccines, but what we're engaged right now with the free market and also uh, copyrights uh, on uh, vaccines, and so they have the ability to have the profit motive so these companies can make huge amounts, is vaccine nationalism. 
That's what's happening right now. That's why the U.S. is doing so fucking well. And by the way, that is awesome. I'm, I'm not saying I want the U.S. not to do well. The U.S. is fucked when it comes to COVID. So I think they should be getting this vaccine. But the reason the U.S. is vaccinating at such a rapid place is it's also one of the places that is producing a lot of the vaccine. As the vaccines are produced, countries that have them are not shipping them overseas to other countries, even for the money. So Canada has bought a lot of vaccines, but at the same time, they're not arriving to Canada. And if you want to talk about why Canada doesn't have its own vaccine producing program or why it's rushing right now to make one, it's because of of privatization yeah i mean that's another story for another day anyways i don't want to downplay any of this okay i i do think that this is something that needs to be called out and i do think this is something that the left needs to call out very carefully this is a very strange position for the left to be in it is atrocious what is happening in xinjiang it is absolutely not something that anybody i think on the left would probably support i think most leftists can easily say to themselves i'm not down with empires I think empires are pretty fucking cringe. Doesn't matter to me if it's the US empire. Doesn't matter to me if it's the Chinese empire. I think both empires, especially monstrously huge capitalist ones, operate in ways that I don't think are very good. Uh, is, is, is that hard? Genocide is bad. Is, is, is that hard? Uh, let's, let's call each other out, sure, and do all this fi uh, finger pointing and saber rattling, while at the same time not acknowledge what we're doing in our own homes, and our own houses. Why not? Like, as I said at the start of the show, I don't have an ability to change anything in China. I don't. Neither do any of you. And even those of you who call yourself proud tankies and think you're part of the CCP, you're not. You can't join the Chinese Communist Party. You cannot become Chinese unless you were born in China, unless you're a native-born Chinese citizen. Then you can become a Chinese citizen. Oh, sorry, then you already are a Chinese citizen. Otherwise, my ability to influence and change the CCP as of right now is, is pretty minimal. I, I know you think I've got some reach, but it's not, it's not that great. What I do have the ability to influence and hopefully affect a little bit is things going on inside Canada, all right? Such as bringing attention to the fact that Canada is currently involved in an actual genocide, in that the Indigenous women have been coming forward and complaining and threatening lawsuits over the fact that the Canadian government is giving them forced sterilizations. Uh, coerced sterilizations all the way to forced sterilizations. That's happening under publicly funded health programs. That's happening right now. That's not a matter of like, oh, this is a, a troubled part of our history, you know, a part of our heritage. No, that's happening now. So guess what? We can make outrage about that we can bring attention to that you know and at the same time we can be like well i'm also not going to support companies and corporations that are utilizing the concentration camps in xinjiang to make their cheap consumer products because that's fucked up i don't want to have the concentration camp iphone edition that, that that's kind of icky to me that's cringe i would rather have one that wasn't made in a xinjiang concentration camp so i, I can call that out as well it, it's perfectly fair you know and by the way, the, de the response from China in this entire thing has been ultimately that if you look at the numbers, and this is not a lie, the population rates of uh, Uyghurs in China have increased by up to 70% in the past, I think, 30 years. Those numbers are true. Their population has increased in size. That's not what a genocide is, though. Like, your population can increase even if an act of genocide is being brought upon you. But that's, that's one of the defenses put forth by the CCP when called about this uh, in their actual uh, statement. Spreading lies runs counter to safeguarding human rights. Some people here in Canada and in some other Western countries claim there have been crimes of the century happening in Xinjiang. But actually, what they are hyping up are lies of the century. Because first, there is no genocide at all in Xinjiang. And I can share with you some of the facts and the figures. Well, Over the past 60 years, the Xinjiang, the life expectancy has risen, has risen from 30 years to 72, 72 years. And the Uyghur's population from 2010 to 2018 has increased by 2.55 million from over one, 10 million, uh, 10, 100, uh, from over just 10 million to 12.72 million. So that's an increase of 25%. That's much higher than the whole population in right, Xinjiang, but, but, which is percent much higher than the Han Dynasty uh, ethnic group of two percent. All right, so it's not genocide at all. You saw the you saw the you saw the vote. Uh, so uh, clearly, the Canadian parliamentarians disagree with you. Uh, the United States has taken a position on this. Um, so I, I'm not sure you and I are going to uh, relitigate exactly what's happening uh, to the Uyghurs because I think uh, there's lots of world opinion that's, that's clear on that, and you dismiss that, I know. So one of the things the Canadian government is, is asking for is an independent investigation, allow an independent group to go in, 
to that region and see exactly what is happening. Are you open to that? Will your government allow that? You know, Xinjiang is an open place for the outside people. And uh, from 2018 to current time, more than 1,200 people have been visited Xinjiang from more than 100 countries. They compose of diplomats, generally. That wasn't really an answer. Uh, I think the, the question is less, are people able to access that area of the world? Of course, yeah. I mean, if you, if you have the ability to do so, if you've gotten the license and everything, you can enter uh, that region. Whether or not they'll have independent camera crews allowed to film inside uh, the actual camps themselves uh, and, and perform extensive documentation uh, is another story. This is a case of basically they had an increase in terrorism. And if you look at the CCP's actual videos on the subject, this is not Western uh, propaganda. This is just straight from uh, you know uh, their own YouTube channel. You'll see them ramping up the fear of Muslims. Uh, ramping, and it's very similar to what the US was doing post 9-11, that, that kind of propaganda, right? It's even in their films and television, you'll see that as well. Whereas there's this now growing fear of uh, terrorist attacks from Muslims. Their response to this, unlike uh, the United States, which is basically like, we're gonna do a war on terror and we're going to make sure that we spread freedom throughout the world. Theirs has been that we're going to perform these re-education centers, as they're calling them, which again has a lot of cultural erasure. Now, is it completely hypocritical for countries like uh, Canada, for countries like France, who are passing anti-Muslim legislation on a regular basis for countries like America to say that this is uh, this is uh, them uniquely doing this? Yes, absolutely. It is hypocritical. But that doesn't mean that it's not happening. Uh, and that doesn't mean that it's also not something that's, that's horrifying and not something that seems to occur uh, when empires reach a certain size, which, you know, the, the grandeur of all these massive empires, these massive capitalist money-making machines usually meet a lot like we also have to remember china uh china being a, a powerful nation is also not a new thing historically like everyone thinks that china has now risen to the to the ranks of being one of the world's superpowers it's got the fastest growing economy in the world by 2028 it's going to overtake the united states economy it's the number one richest country in in, in the planet right uh, china has been a mighty empire multiple times throughout history and in that time it's done horrifying things it's done horrible things as have most empires that's typically what they do most empires throughout history don't rise to the ranks and don't become uh, one of the most powerful nations on earth without also oppressing large amounts of people most and oftentimes uh, oppressing entire cultures, ethnicities, races, if you will. It's also had horrifying things done to it as well. Absolutely. The Japanese seem to have gotten a huge pass when it comes to World War II atrocities because their crimes against humanity uh, on, on China are absolutely horrifying. Uh, amongst some of the worst uh, in, in the field of war that have ever happened, you know, like this, it, it seems that empires, the Japanese empire included, do horrible things. <laughs> like maybe the lesson from all this, and I, I know this is going to be a nuclear spicy take, empires are cringe. Maybe empires are bad. Maybe when countries grow to a size where they have to say that I'm the most powerful and largest country on earth, uh, they do really shitty stuff. And uh, yeah, uh, speaking of cringe... The NDP posted this today. What are you doing, NDP? NDP intercepts early draft of Biden-Trudeau meeting agenda. You won't believe what we found. Haha, <laughs> lol, emojis. U.S.-Canada agenda. The following is a proposed set of issues to be discussed during the first presidential bilateral meeting between Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and U.S. President Joe Biden. Agenda. Greetings and congratulations. Open discussion on shared priorities. Buy America executive order. Crossed out. Nope. Resources, Keystone XL, highlighted, yes. Number two, fossil fuel subsidies crossed out, LOL, no. And then Biden's executive order on $15 minimum wage, Biden's COVID student loan repayment freeze, national paid sick leave operations crossed out, LOL, ooh, ooh, 420, all oh, no, who made this, gaff. Efforts to address global COVID-19 pandemic, vast nations roll out practices, cross, 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 Er, not my responsibility. He, <laughs> tee hee. Domestic emergency supply chain. Tips and tricks, lol, no. Proposed summertime ice cream summit at Harrington Lake. Well, I, I did not know about the proposed ice cream summit. And I, I for one, am, oh wait, OMG, yes. Get local ice cream special flavor, maple or poutine brills. This, that's what we call the drip. The fuck are you doing, NDP? You posted cringe. You posted cringe. God damn, did you ever post cringe? What the fuck is this shit? <laughs> and yeah, guess what? The world should be laughing at you. <laughs> like, what the fuck?
Shame on you. You posted cringe, NDP. If you want us to advertise your channel or work, please go to wearesurfs.com and email us a 20 to 30 second ad and we'll take it on to the end of one of our videos to help promote your leftist channel or progressive something. Whatever you do. Your gods, I'm Raph, Xander Corvus, Schlotsky, we look to the stars for your divine guidance. To our monarch, Tom Spiker, we are merely puppets for your amusement. To our lords, Trevor R., Alexander Thaler, Hans Josephin, Ryan Lubin, Timothy K. Meeblebeeps Jr., Bisexual Black Gamer, and Toe Fox, we shall carry your banner into the fog of war. To our knights of the round table, Josh Mickelson, Zach Christensen, Todd Buckingham, Todd Lajones, Political Puppy, Jimmy Big Nuts, Andreas Chiringuito, Yopi, Violent Orchard, Sophie Baby, Thomas Barrington, Jay Fraser Cartwright, Gufalankius, Melissa Murphy, Nicholas Marks, Radical Maniac, The Great Poudini, Kale Kotka, Anthropophagic, Serene 42, Chronic De Hemp Hog, Phone Jenny, Incosin, Constance Joyce Lacheris and Ramona Costa, we drink with you and we salute you.